To see yeah. you. Yeah, so nice to have you with nice us. Nice to see you too. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, so excited. So, what is this all about? What do you mean? What is this all uh, what about? Are you gonna, what kind of cookies are you gonna do? Gabby, what We're kind of cookies? Some... <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna make some chocolate chip rosemary cookies, which I know is probably like a weird combination for some people, but this is like one of my favorite cookies to make. So I hope I hope you like it. <laughs> um. Yeah, this is when I when you guys asked me to uh, make like bake a thing for this, I asked a bunch of friends like, okay, what is the thing I bake that you like the most? And almost all of them said this recipe. So I I hope it lives up to the hype. <laughs> um, it's pretty Very easy, pretty easy to make. So you know, hopefully it's not too bad. Um, not in my yeah. regular kitchen, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah. this is uh, going to be exciting for so, for, for both uh, for all of us also here in the studio, I think, because they have to taste <laughs> the cookies and then uh, see. Uh, Do you need me as an assistant or? No, no, I, no. Well, yeah? maybe, maybe, but you, but you can call maybe me later. Then. I will okay. call you maybe. If, okay. uh, so you see, I've got lovely ex assistants, and maybe even uh, some more people uh, can ex assist me. So you know, you never yeah. know. Okay, I wish you a lot of fun. Mm, thank you. Also, everybody who's watching. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> I want to try the cookies. <laughs> okay. Bye, Thorsten. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Have you cooked on stream before? Never. It's my first time. So I, I feel very like, what do I do? It feels so I awkward. know. <laughs> same here. Same here. <laughs> I thought I was just going to sit, you know, sit and just watch you and ask questions and everything. But now I've got my fork because I saw I needed a fork. Yeah. And, uh, now we got and some other stuff. <laughs> what? A lot of pressure to the, like cook on stream in front of yeah, people, right? you know? <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Yes. Um, do you have an oven? I assume you have an oven behind. Yes, the, the oven goes. has yeah. been expertly uh, turned on by the assistants. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so I'm going to turn my oven on. Uh, the recipe says it's for 350. However, my oven runs really cold, so I'm going to turn mine on to like 375. So, you're okay, so, why my oven is okay we have Celsius so here, so it's about 180 Celsius. That's right, yeah. We also, okay, Canada uses the metric system, but I don't know, all of our ovens are also in Fahrenheit for some reason, so I have no idea. What, yeah, I'm guessing baking <laughs> is just different. Is. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's very weird. Everything's a mix here. We, like, <laughs> all of our temperatures are in all of our like degrees, like when you talk about the weather, it's in Celsius. Mm -hmm. but when you bake, it's in Fahrenheit. I don't know. It's a weird mix. Oh, wow. So. Yeah. Okay. Confusing. <laughs> All right. 350 degrees. And then um, it says to line some baking sheets with um, parchment paper or grease. My, I have a, uh, I don't have to call it like a silk pad, which is like a silicone mat that you can put on your baking yeah. sheets. That's what I'm using. Um, you can use parchment or anything else. And then, yeah, a we're going to start. Parchment. Uh, Perfect. I have, I have a tiny bit of parchment brought by Sebastian, so um, we'll see how many cookies go on <laughs> to that. <laughs> um, all right, and then uh, we're going to start mixing ingredients. So we're going to take half a cup of coconut oil and two tablespoons of rosemary. We're going to mix them together. So I haven't chopped my rosemary yet, so I'm going to start by doing that. Um, I just bought mine from the grocery store because I have a little rosemary plant, but yeah. it's like very small. I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get two tablespoons out of that. So <laughs> I cheated and I bought some. But is yours, where is yours from? Is yours from a, yours from a garden? Or no, you... well, pro yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's from an organic shop. So I guess at some point they were, I mean, they have to grow somewhere, but I, I don't know. But they smell really uh, uh, delicious. And 
they are everywhere. Like how much do we need? A half a cup of coconut two, oil? It's, uh, we only need two tablespoons of rosemary. So here, I'll, I'll just switch my camera. I don't have oh. proper tools for, for measuring. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. Okay, I'm gonna measure it in my tablespoons and then I will, I will tell you like, oh, it's one handful or something. Maybe that's helpful. So basically what I do is I keep my little measuring spoon handy when, I, when I'm doing this normally. And I just fill it up just so I have like a rough idea of how much it is. So if you have one, you can do that. But otherwise you can probably just eyeball it, right? So I just take my rosemary, this is already clean, and I just start chopping it up. I don't worry about the stems, Everything is chopping. everything's good here. Can, can someone give me a, a, a knife? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You probably also tear it up if you want to, it's just like the rosemary bits yeah, will be larger in your cookies, which is probably fine. Like they do soften up when you bake them, so it isn't like, too ridiculous, but yeah, I'm just chopping up the leaves into little bits, and then as I do that, I just like oh, it smells so good. It smells like Christmas. <laughs> See, there it comes. Oh, wow! It's a proper one. Thank you so much. Whoa, fancy knife! Look at this. <laughs> I'll just it's huge. On the <laughs> Let's see. I'll just tear. Okay. <laughs> well, I expected like a small butter knife or anything or something. <laughs> They're like, here's a butcher knife here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's gonna be right. very chunky. That's fine. <laughs> chunky rosemary chocolate chip <laughs> cookies. <laughs> Hopefully it's, you know. Maybe that adds to it. Maybe you end up with like a better flavor if it's chunky, you know? Maybe, yeah. Did you wa then, wash the rosemary? Uh, I did, yes. Cool. But <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you bought it from an organic store, if it would be washed already. <laughs> yeah, is that better? Okay, so like my assistant, one of my other assistants is coming in. <laughs> Could you fill? There you a, go. Uh, could you fill a bowl with some water? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this stream is probably going to take longer than sixty minutes at this way. <laughs> but so uh, how are you doing? In uh, you're in Toronto, right? I am. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing all right. Uh, the weather has been really nice, so I've been getting out of the house a lot more. We were in, we've been in lockdown pretty much nonstop throughout mm -hmm. the winter. Right. And so it's been really nice to like, as soon as the weather gets good, everyone's outside now. And I, I feel like I extra appreciate it because we were inside for so long. Mm -hmm. So I just been spending a lot of time outdoors. And how about y'all? How about, how about uh, Berlin? How, how have you guys been? How's the weather? How's like the, the COVID situation? Sorry, I was distracted by the rosemary. <laughs> it's okay, I'm asking so many like difficult questions. Yeah. No, <laughs> Let's yeah. talk about COVID, no problem. <laughs> yes. Easy I was going. like water and rosemary. See, this is uh, like multitasking is uh, pretty hard actually. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out, yeah. Yeah, it turns out. <laughs> uh, like talking to a friend, right, in the kitchen, like we're doing now, but then... Also, there's like streams and everything and people around us. It's oh, sure. Um, a lot of stuff going on, fair. <laughs> Sebastian, can I ask you something? <laughs> so, <laughs> can you, can you deze, ik moest ze even wassen, kan je ze sort of drainen? Okay, yeah, sorry. Drain it and then, yes. yeah, drain it and then make sure you pat it so it's like kind of, kind of dry when yeah. you, uh, yes. before you chop it. Also, okay. For like rough reference, this is what it looks like in my hand. Okay. It's like a little little tiny handful. That's like about one tablespoon. Right. Okay, so, so we needed two. Hopefully that <laughs> we okay. need two of them. Yeah. And then I'm gonna grab a little bowl. Put those in there. Okay. 
Have you uh, ever been to Berlin? Never. Ooh. I would love to go to Berlin. Yeah. I would love to come to Amaze specifically. I've heard so many good things about it. Aw. And uh, yeah, just talking about doing it in 2020 and then the pandemic happened. Yeah. Like, well, mm, yeah, <laughs> maybe so many things. some other time. <laughs> yeah, well, like hopefully 2023, like we're doing now just one day of um, uh, in person and the rest is online. Nice. And then um, hopefully next year we'll be able to do like four full days again. Or long. Yeah. Maybe but yeah, it would be great to have you here. Um, then we, we can bake cakes or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably easier to, to do it in person than it is online. Um, but yeah. Okay, here's my, my second. And also if you find little like hard bits in your rosemary, you can take them out. They will soften up when they okay. bake. But like, yeah, the main stem, you know, like this big, mm -hmm. yeah, the big white one. bit. Yeah. You can, yeah, you can either take the leaves off and chop them up or you can just chop it and then get rid of those bits as you, as you find them, so. Yeah, they're gonna be a little bit wet for my. That's okay. It's gonna go into the coconut oil so it's gonna get kind of wet anyway. It's just, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, if you yeah. can show me what like a cup looks looks like for, uh, because the- Oh, I guess you don't have cups either. <laughs> no, but also I don't okay. have like a, another measure way of measuring. So I just grabbed a literal cup <laughs> from the cupboards. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, I can definitely, can definitely do that. So what do you make, do you bake, do you, you bake more or cook? Like what's, what's another favorite of yours? I, I do more baking than cooking. Uh, I do both. I like cooking and baking, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know. There's something about baking that I find. I just like sweets. That's <laughs> I'm trying to come up with like a good way to say that, but I, mm -hmm. I just love sugar. I love sweets. I love bacon. Um, yeah, it's been interesting because I found out during the pandemic that I have like, or I, I don't know if I found out, but like developed kind of like a weird stomach issue during the pandemic. Mm. So now I can't eat like dairy or right. gluten or like any of the good stuff. Yeah. So it's been a really weird, weird time, but also kind of interesting in that like I had to learn how to kind of re relearn how to bake things. Mm -hmm without gluten, without dairy, um, which has been really interesting. So, and like the science of it is so fascinating because you think like, oh, okay, no, like you can just substitute something else for it, but it doesn't work kind of like one-to-one, -one. everything is super different. And so yes. it's been a really, really like, it's been uh, like annoying. I just want to eat cheese all the time. And yeah. I can't. <laughs> but, but also it's been really fascinating just seeing how things change like the science of it changes and like finding ways to substitute stuff and mm -hmm. what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. I don't know. Super interesting. So anyways, very long winded say way of saying like, <laughs> I love baking cakes. <laughs> <laughs> I love making like banana breads. I yeah. love making cookies. Um, yeah. How about you? Are you more of a baker or a, a cooker? Uh, cooker. I like to eat things basically more than yeah and then so like people ask me if I enjoy cooking I'm like not really but I enjoy what I made so I can eat it um, yeah and then with baking I, I have these phases of baking but I had to throw out like lots of um, uh, what's the thing called again uh, meal Sebastian meal flour yeah thanks flour, <laughs> flour. Yeah. I had to throw out uh, lots of flour uh, because I stopped baking for a while uh, but also I have, I also have uh, like I'm lactose intolerant. So I also need oh, to yeah. do um, the other things. And then a friend of mine gave me a vegan bake, baking, uh, bake, cooking book, baking book. Nice. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's also like all these different ingredients that I don't know how they, how they work. Like also yeah. even egg replacements um, and yes. they never yeah. work for me somehow. Yeah. That's this recipe I found really good because it uses black seed mm -hmm. as a replacement for egg yes and it works really well for this really? recipe but mm -hmm. I do find that some recipes it's not not as easy so all right there's my second uh tablespoon again it's about like a handful how are you doing with uh your rosemary 
Yeah, I think I've I've sort of finished. I'll just do it all okay. by eye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a little bit, like, and see. You know, people will have to crunch on uh, on some stuff, maybe. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna uh, we're gonna mix this up with half a cup of coconut oil. So I'm gonna try to put it together and see if I can give you like a good estimate of what that what that looks like. Okay, so my rosemary is in my little bowl here. And then uh, okay, this is like a half cup measurement. Which wow. <laughs> I don't know how to uh, convert that to like a regular cup, but I'm going to uh, I'm going to add it in, and then I will. I don't know what I'm trying to figure out a good way to convert this into like what you have there, you yeah. know, like what is a regular cup, cup look like? Okay. I have this giant container of coconut oil that doesn't even fit in camera, that's how big it is. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use a spoon and I'm gonna scoop it out into this little measuring cup here. Cool. Um, what kind of cups do you have with you? I just have a regular like tea cup. <laughs> like a like a drinking cup. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I have to wash it like really good, really well. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be super coconutty. <laughs> yes. I mean it's I good maybe though. That's, maybe that's good though, yeah. yeah. Right? It's, maybe it's, it's tasty. nice. Um, it's oily anyway, it's coconut, so what's <laughs> you know, what's uh, what's there to hate basically? <laughs> So uh, I should have mentioned this, that the coconut oil should be kind of soft, which is really hard to, you know, coconut oil changes form so mm. easily. So, um, but ideally it's not liquidy. Ideally it's not like super solid. It's kind of in the middle. Um, yeah, if this it's one too feels liquidy. Good. Okay, great. Okay, that is half a cup. <laughs> So let me think. A tea Do cup. you remember how many uh, spoons you took in there? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not. Hold on. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Let's, let's deconstruct this. Hold on. All right. I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna take it out of the cup now. <laughs> okay, we got one. Yep. Two. These are kind of heaping. Yep. Three, I'm gonna say four. four. Four heaping tablespoons. Okay, then I will add four one more. Teaspoons. These are teaspoons, yeah. Teaspoons or tablespoons? Teaspoons. It's really hard to see actually, like <laughs> the, the size of it on the camera. It just feels like, yeah, maybe in relationship to your hands. Okay, I will keep this, it like yeah. this then. This is a this is a teaspoon. Okay. But then really? It's bigger than a teaspoon, I feel like. Maybe our teaspoons are bigger than your teaspoons. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> The, the Canadian teaspoons so are giant. Confusing this. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I'm super fascinated by this. Um, hold on. Okay. This is what we call a tablespoon. They okay. look the same on camera. No. <laughs> no, they look a little bit smaller, but yeah, it's, exactly weird. It's, okay. it's hard. This is a teaspoon. Yes. This is a tablespoon. Right. But maybe for you, teaspoons are smaller than this. I don't know. Yeah, this feels like a dessert like, uh, spoon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, four of whatever this is. <laughs> okay. You know, we'll eyeball it and see uh, if we'll taste it. <laughs> It'll be very coconutty. It'll be fine. <laughs> this is going well so far, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and we're only at the first part of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nice. Okay. <laughs> So now that you have your coconut oil and your rosemary, take your take a fork. Take a fork. Got that one. And Ooh, I put, put it in there. Okay. But is it a tea fork or is it a table fork? Like how many bowls do you work with, actually? Uh, mostly just this one. Okay. You mostly put. Yeah, you mostly to put everything into one bowl, if I remember correctly. Okay, my... Basically, you're smashing up, smashing up the uh, rosemary with the coconut oil. You're just kind of mixing it until it's kind of like relatively mixed together. Yeah, my coconut oil is definitely a little bit more liquidy than yours. Okay, that's probably fine. Because it's hot in the studio. 
Okay. Just so you're just gonna get it until it's like nice and mixed up. All right. I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way because I don't need a cutting board anymore. Here. All right. <clears throat> so now we have our little coconut oil mixture. Mm -hmm. How are you doing over there? You all mixed it's up? Mixed. It does look different than yours, oh. but you know, <laughs> that's just how it goes. <laughs> all right. Now we're going to add uh, our sugars. So that's a quarter cup of gra uh, granulated sugar and a third of a cup of brown sugar. So again, I'm going to try to. Figure out, I guess maybe spoons is probably the best way for me to convert from like what I'm doing to what you're doing, right? So, yeah. All right, so this is a quarter cup of a granulated sugar. I'm gonna take my, the same teaspoon that I've having before. And I'm just gonna okay. eyeball. This is which, which, one. which sugar is this? This is not the brown sugar. This wait. is regular. This is just wait, regular. Wait, 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 wait. I have to open. <laughs> I have to open the same thing. <laughs> okay. With this, While you do uh, that, I'm gonna figure out how many teaspoons. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six. Like six-ish. Six-ish. Regular. Yes. Yeah. Of, of uh, regular sugar. <laughs> Four, five, six. Got six perfect. of a spoon <laughs> in there. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> and then we're going to do it is a third of a cup of brown sugar. So I'll do the same thing. It doesn't say if it's like packed or not. Uh, so I'm just going to assume that it's not. So there's a third of a cup of brown sugar. So then I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, we got one, Different kind two, of sugar, really. three, four, five, six, like heaping, heaping tablespoons of brown sugar. Six? Six as well? This is a different again. kind of sugar. Oh, well. Yeah. Six different kind of sugar. This one's more like... Like when I, I did know. Six tablespoons. Can you look in the cupboard to see? Because I thought this, saw other other brown sugar there as well. Maybe that works better than this one. What do you have right there? I can't see it. What, what sugar do you have? It's it says brown sugar, but it's different okay. from what I know because it, you know it was a different shop, <laughs> a German shop. <laughs> Is it the same? It's the same. <laughs> it feels like it's the same. Okay. <laughs> Yes, same. Thanks. Oh, uh, I'm looking at our Twitch stream, and Tabby, Axon Tabby says, "Yeah, cups to milliliters for an approximate result. Multiply the volume value of by 237 if it helps. 16 tablespoons in a cup, 15 milliliters in a tablespoon, 48 teaspoons in a cup." Okay, okay that's that's too much math, but I appreciate it, Tabby. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> my my mixture does definitely looks a lot different from yours. <laughs> oh no! Okay, is yours like more liquidy? I, yeah, liquidy? I think it's because of the different kinds of ingredients. It's fine though. We'll just see what happens. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe yours will end up being like even better. You know, <laughs> I kind of doubt totally, it, but you know, totally perfect. <laughs> super surprise. <laughs> All right, so basically, we're just mixing all of these. It says to beat for one minute. Um, I wow. guess you're just basically taking the fork and you're meeting, like, just mixing it until it's all very, very smooth. Um, normally, I do this with have like a fancy kitchen aid mixer behind me, mm -hmm. but I figure I would do this with a fork because not everybody has a fancy schmancy mixer. So. You know. is, it, uh, what, is, it, uh, is it like a, a red or like a sp specific color kind of mix no, that you see in these cooking it's shows? Just, it's, just, <laughs> it's just black. Okay. <laughs> Do you watch a Literally, lot of cooking yeah. shows or baking shows? There's um, lots of them on, on streaming services. On YouTube, yeah. I watch uh, Binging with Babish on YouTube. Okay. He does like, he does, 
he does a lot of food inspired by like TV shows and mm, movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Love that guy. Yeah. I also just find like his videos are just very pretty. Mm. They're just very pretty to watch, and I always get really hungry watching them. That's really it. That, I I don't really have any interest in like learning how to cook the things. I just want to see the good food. Yeah. You know. <laughs> how about you? Do you Same. have any? Uh, yeah. I, okay. <laughs> I watched Nailed It a lot. Oh yeah. Because it's so it's it's such a kind show, even though like because you uh you you bake something, it's like amateur bakers that love baking but they, they don't re not really good at it. So they go on the show yeah. and then they have to bake this elaborate thing on the show. And it's so funny what the results are, but they're all laughing about it. And they, it's it's such a nice show. I, I really, if I'm like a little bit down or something, I'll like um, watch it and I'm become happy again. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, so they're so good humored about it. Like yeah. they never make fun of anybody. They, like no. it's always like laughing together, which is you know, I love it. There was there was one episode where I forget what they're making, but one of the contestants mixed up salt and sugar oh right and like <laughs> and they're all eating it like what happened it, it's like, it looks awful but it tastes worse and that never happens and it's just this is very yeah I like nailed it it's really funny it, okay so yeah. now, now that it's like mostly mixed up mine is liquid gonna... <laughs> okay great <laughs> like entirely liquid or kind of it's okay. not at all like yours. I mean, I could start over, but I don't want us to. <laughs> maybe it's fine. I think like yeah. your cookies will probably spread more. Yes. So maybe before we bake them, we can put the bowls in the fridge for a little yeah, bit, and that might probably. help solid it up a little bit. Yeah. So everyone at home <laughs> should look kind of more like a putty, I would say. It's not like um, this liquidy stuff. <laughs> but it's hard, though, because uh, coconut oil is so liquidy. Right, yeah. like it, 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 depending on how hot or cold it is, right? Mm -hmm. It's really hard. So yeah. we'll we'll see how it goes. Um, okay, now we're gonna add your non-dairy choice uh, milk, milk of choice. I'm using almond milk. Um, I'm so. using uh, what do I? What's this? All oats. I'm using oats. Oat milk. Uh, I found out recently that I can't drink oat milk anymore, oh, and okay. I'm so sad about it. Aww, even not <laughs> it's oats so anymore. It's so good. Yeah. Do you have like a measuring cup for? No, liquid? probably not. Okay, <laughs> okay. Quarter cup is like I don't know. I don't know how to measure this. Um, I have an actual like paper cup. <laughs> maybe like yeah. I don't know. I know is it's liquid is... anyway already. So <laughs> there. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Let's a quarter of that cup maybe is a. I will just use this quarter cup. thing as a cup. All right, so we're adding the uh, quarter cup of milk of choice. And then you're just going to mix it in. <laughs> it's more like you a batter for cake than a cookie dough. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I do think like putting it in the fridge will probably help because otherwise I don't know how it's going to stay cookie form. <laughs> I might need to use like a, a muffin tin. I saw that they have one. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that could work, right? <laughs> then you get like rosemary, chocolate chip muffins. Chocolate chip delicious. muffin cookie things. And also, I mean, that doesn't sound bad. That sounds really tasty as well, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it's proper batter, so you know. It's what okay. it is. Okay. For what it's worth, mine is also turning liquidy <laughs> as well. I'm you know, not, so not you like know, it. you're not alone. Cool. <laughs> Basically, just mixing it in, and if yours is not already liquid, it will start to turn liquidy. I think also, like, as you're mixing in, like, the coconut oil softens even more. So, if yeah. it's not already liquidy, it will probably become kind of liquidy. So, here we go. We're probably closer to each other now. And then um, we're going to add a tablespoon of ground flax seeds. This is basically like a like substitute for eggs. Right. And it helps bind, bind the recipe together the way that an egg would normally. Um, I suspect that if you are not vegan and you substituted this with an egg, it probably looks the same way, but we're just going to follow the recipe. So uh, a tablespoon is about a handful. If you don't have a measuring spoon, just toss that in. And it should be ground, ground flaxseed. Yes. Um, okay, perfect. 
geschrotet in German <laughs> or something how like that. How do you that. say it? I don't Shorted? actually know. <laughs> okay. I just read it for like how I saw it. <laughs> So what does, it do, what does this do to the to your to it's your dough? Uh, it looks basically the same, mm. but when you bake it, it prevents the dough from like falling apart. Basically, is what what an egg or a uh, flaxseed would do. Yeah. Okay, so that's what mine that's what mine looks like right now. It's kind of like liquidy liquidy goo. <laughs> <laughs> smells really good. I don't know. Um, mm. uh, so I don't know about you, but I'm always really tempted to just like yeah. taste it. Well, normally, yes. This one, what I'm looking at right now, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, now that this is all mixed together, then we're going to add our vanilla. Um, which is two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract for each of the So they didn't have extract. So I, uh, the next best thing was the sh vanilla sugar. Well, that probably works. I don't know what the conversion is from. Me neither. We just do it. You know, we just smash it into the um, batter. <laughs> okay. I have. Um, I learned how to make homemade vanilla so that I'm obnoxious and I have this like little mason jar of vanilla so I'm going to use two teaspoons of that I assume you could probably just use two te teaspoons of the vanilla sugar you have and you do that. yeah cooking is or baking good. is like an exact science also right <laughs> well <laughs> not today <laughs> we'll see <laughs> we'll see how it goes uh, and then the vanilla you just kind of mix in just until it's combined, and that's about it. It's teaspoon, vanilla is like, it's really good, but it's also really easy to overdo it. So you kind of, even like just, if you use the minimum amount, if you like over mix it, it actually, like there's something about it that permeates the rest of the recipe and makes it worse if you over mix it. So you basically just want to, whenever you use vanilla in a recipe, you just want to mix it until it's combined. Um, all right, so, now that we're done all the liquid stuff, we're going to start adding our flours, like our, uh, our dry ingredients. So we need about one and a third cups of all-purpose flour. Uh, I'm using gluten-free flour because my stomach sucks and I can't have regular flour anymore. I also have gluten-free flour here. Hey! Yay. Nice. <laughs> Was that by choice or was that just like... It was because I had to go to an orga organic shop because that was the only one that was open on Sunday in oh, Berlin. No. <laughs> okay. So I had the choice of many, many, many different ones and I went for this one. All right, we got one and a third cups of flour. I don't know how to convert this for you. I could do the teaspoon thing again mm -hmm. where I just take a cup. Okay, so this is a cup of flour. We need one and a third. Right. So I'm going to start counting out teaspoons and we'll see how that goes. So, all right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16. Okay, so then Tabby was right. It is 16 tablespoons in a cup. Basically, <laughs> yes. 16, 16 uh, spoonfuls. Mm -hmm. And then Did that. 16 divided by three. What is 16 divided by three or eight, 12? Nope. I guess five and a bit more teaspoons. So 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21 or 22 teaspoons is probably the equivalent for you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I put a little bit of extra in there and then see. Okay. Excited to see how... Uh, I counted with you, so now I have to do a couple extra. Apparently. Oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's okay, that's okay. Um, it was 16 and then like five on yeah. top of that. My, my uh, flower is a bit yellow. Oh. Yeah. 
Yellow. Yeah. I don't know what that's from. <laughs> you know what? It's par for the course at this point. Uh, maybe it's, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's the vanilla sugar. Maybe the vanilla sugar made it yellow. No, the, the, the flower itself is yellow. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Mine is not. Mine is just like a regular white. Regular, yeah. Okay, I'm definitely gonna have to put this in uh, in uh, the tin of the muffin tin. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> it looks good right. though. Kinda. I'm sure. I'm sure it tastes. Uh, I'm sure it tastes great. So before before we continue, <laughs> uh, what, what's your uh, what's your background? It's not cooking or baking. No. So I, tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. Um, my background, I studied graphic design when I was in college. Mm -hmm. um, although when I was in college, I worked part time at a bakery oh. uh, baking like bread and stuff. So like kind of, I kind of have a little bit of a professional background in, yeah. in baking. And then uh, when I was graduating in my last year of uh, my last year of school, I got really into like, a lot of the work I was doing at school was about video games, like making posters or websites. Just I really, really love video games. And I hadn't really thought about them too much since I was a kid, because I think like when you're in middle school, everyone kind of bullies you out of at the, the nerdy things. Or that's what it was like when I was a kid. And so I kind of like stopped being interested in video games between like middle school and high school. But then in college, I like fell back in love with video games. And so a lot of my portfolio had video game stuff in it. Mm -hmm. And then when I graduated, I got a job at um, a video game studio here in Toronto that doesn't exist anymore, but uh, I was on the marketing team of that video game studio. So that's kind of how I got into games, uh, which is pretty interesting and like kind of a weird roundabout way. Yeah. Um, okay, back to the dough real quick. because yeah. So this is all, this is all mixed in, and we also have to add a half teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of baking soda. So um, you can just use a teaspoon, I assume, like just like a like a half teaspoon. Um, I have a little measuring spoon here, so I'm gonna do that. So a half teaspoon of salt or baking soda. Rather. Wait, salt or baking and soda? Both. Okay, both. <laughs> okay. Half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking soda. Right. I was baking soda this, it's just like regular table salt. All right. Now that those are in, we're gonna we're gonna keep uh, keep mixing. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, I worked on the marketing team of that game studio for like a year, but I was really interested in how games get made and I really wanted to work on the game side. And so um, I, when, I think about a year after I was working on the, the marketing team, they opened up a position on the game side doing game art and UI UX design, and they just moved me over. And that's kind of how I started making art for games. Mm -hmm. And I also really wanted, I was really curious about like the engine and none of the other artists I worked with had any interest in like learning how to use the engine. They just kind of wanted to hand their art to someone else and get them to put it in. But I was like, I want to know about the engine. I want to know about Unity and like how to use it. So one of the programmers taught me how to use Unity. And then I got really interested in like making my own games from then. And uh, then I decided I wanted to make my own games and like work for other studios. So I left that studio and uh, like freelanced for a bit. And then we made, my partner and I made a game called Mortician's Tale with a team of collaborators. Um, yeah, that's basically the the short version. <laughs> How I got into games and like making games and stuff. So yeah. Cool. Um all right, and the last thing we're gonna add, sorry, I'm jumping around a bunch. Last thing we're gonna add to our dough. This is what mine looks like, by the way. I don't know what yours looks like. That looks looking... uh, that looks that looks good. Mine looks different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yours you said is it more is it still like a like a like a like cake batter like yeah cake, it's like more cake dough? batter yeah okay i will take a picture of both yours and mine <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Done. I don't know. Maybe maybe like I'm in a muffin tin. It'll be really good. I yeah, just, maybe. I... <laughs> I, I wouldn't be. Oh, I can actually repeat this recipe because it's on camera. <laughs> and just bring the tools that I have. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> From here. Uh, okay. <laughs> I need a half cup. Where is it? It doesn't look similar, Thorsten. <laughs> All right, I am missing my half cup. I think I put it in the sink already. So I'm just going to use my third cup, and I'm going to mix, uh, fill it halfway. So I'm using um, vegan, oh yeah, dark chocolate chips. These Brand. are definitely not vegan that I have. <laughs> Or is your, is your lactose intolerance, like, are you okay with, like, a little bit of dairy? It's, yeah, I'll just sometimes ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's, <laughs> that's what I like, too. I think, like, every lactose intolerant I know is like that. Where they're like, you know what, it's fine, I'll just suffer. <laughs> yeah, we'll suffer and then later try again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's my half cup of chocolate chips. And I'm just going to mix those in. Mine looks like this for the people watching on the show. I don't know if anyone's baking along, but if so, please tell me what your dough looks like. I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know if someone had one, like if their coconut oil was really solid. Yeah. The, what does that look like? Does that, yeah, yeah, we have them. We would have everything. Um, all the, the mixes. Okay. So mine, mine looks like cookie dough. <laughs> Um, nice. Did you want to? <laughs> okay, two options for you. Do you want to try the uh, muffin tin and see if it makes like chocolate chip rosemary muffins? Yeah. Or do you want to try? Okay. I, mean, I think I'm, that I'm might curious. be better. Sebastian. I'm curious and I feel like it's going to turn out really good. So I want to know. I saw a tin <laughs> in the left cupboard, the left upper thingy, I think, on the up. Yeah can't see it by because of the I think it was there yeah uh, yep. Kara says she's cooking along and her dough looks and tastes good so I'm also <laughs> gonna I'm also gonna taste mine awesome. I haven't done that yet yeah. I'll, we can and put I, the lining stuff on there mm. did you taste it it's so good it's good yeah it's that, so good I don't dare <laughs> <laughs> okay Does you, do you have like muffin liners or like something it? that? It's no egg. Yeah, taste it. Thorsten's gonna I don't know taste what it, it tastes like. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's good. It's really good. Okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. It's uh, a. Uh, oh no, I, I have one. Now that our dough, do you have like, yeah, can you grease your muffin tins at all or is it, you're just going to put it? I'm going to try and have my little baking paper thingy sheets, okay. whatever, and put it in there. You could also know. do, you can probably, if you have like a, like a paper towel, you could probably take a bit of the coconut oil and just like rub it around the muffin tin. And that way you get like a little bit of True. grease on it. That way it doesn't, you can try that. That way it doesn't stick. Um, Did you watch? I'm 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 invested in these muffins now. I, I need to know. <laughs> I need yeah, to know if well, they're gonna turn out. I'd say we would send you one, but I don't think it will survive. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently, Thorsten really enjoyed it. Yeah. He did. Yeah. He's, tr he's truthful. <laughs> I don't know how long it takes because it's not the. <laughs> it's not the same. Normally, like muffins needs like 40 minutes or something. Well, yeah, I don't know. Um, we, we can test have it. to see. Okay. So then we're going to take, uh, if you're making these in cookie form, you take about like a tablespoon mm -hmm. and you make like a heaping tablespoon and you just make it to a little ball and you put it on your baking sheet. Um, so I assume muffin tin's probably similar, like about like a tablespoon per yeah. muffin. And these will spread out because they are pretty, like even even um, 
like mine are pretty soft, so they will spread out. So I'm trying to trying to space them out a little bit so that they don't. We'll see. He's probably gonna space out a bunch, but we'll see. This is what my looks like. Okay. We don't have. Okay, we can make more even. How many uh, do you have? Like, how many will you make out of this? The, the, the stuff that I you think made? it's it's two dozen, but we can just do a dozen on on camera. Um, <laughs> but in muffin form, I don't know. Maybe you can like double up. I feel like that might work better. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I don't know. I feel like cooking. And also baking. Like I know that baking is like more scientific, but I feel like there's still a lot of like improv that sometimes uh -huh. you have to do. You well, know what I mean? I, I feel so. like this. This is why the amateur bake is always at nailed. Good show up at nailed it because they do <laughs> the improvisation part of it. <laughs> this could be our submission tape to nailed it. Yeah. We'll, uh... <laughs> so it's pretty amazing what they sometimes have to make and then what it looks like in the end. It's, yeah, so cool. I do feel like they give them challenges. Like they know that they the person cannot possibly. Yeah. Yes. Do but it, that's, but and that's yeah. also good. It, it's a challenge, a proper challenge. Anyway, yeah. Part of the fun. Yeah. Does uh, <laughs> does cooking or baking actually uh, come back in your work, like your game work, in any form or shape? Not really. We the my studio Laundry Bird Games. We started working on a game after Mortician's Tale mm -hmm. about food, but then we ended up abandoning it. And uh, I ended up taking a job at my current studio, which is Drinkbox Games. And Andrew, my co-founder, is working on like a different game now. Mm -hmm. So almost, we almost made a game about cooking. Right. But um, I don't know, I feel like there's so many games out there that do what we were thinking about doing, mm -hmm. but like better. So I'm, I'm totally fine with that. I just really want to play more games with uh, cooking. Also, okay. So these are all in ball form. They're definitely going to flatten out. So then what I do once I put them on the baking pan is I kind of flatten them out a little bit mm -hmm. just with my hands. And they will spread because they are like pretty soft. Um, so that's what mine looks like. I have a little, little finger indents on my cookies. Um, how's your muffin? How are your muffin tins? Is it all, they're all full up? Uh, yeah, I put like a two, two third of it full because probably with the baking soda, it will rise a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and hope this is fine. And I might also put some on a baking sheet anyway, to see if that, yeah, how that works. Try it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So our oven is, our oven's hot. I'm going to, uh, switch my camera over so you can see my face. Um, but I'm going to put these in the oven for about, hey, it says 10 to, hello, it says 10 to 12 minutes, but again, my oven runs a bit cold. So I'm going to put this in for 15 minutes okay. for, for muffins, maybe try the same and we'll see yeah. how it goes. And okay. then you can always keep it in longer. So. Right. I will walk to the thing right back. Is it still on? Skeleton apron. Yeah, I have a. This is the only apron I have. It's from like Halloween five years ago, and you know what? It does the job. It's uh, <laughs> nice. Very yeah. on brand. It looks cool. I uh, I asked Thorsten if he had one for me for this baking session, but he didn't have anything. So. Oh. <laughs> well, I hope you didn't get any flour or anything. No, it's actually. Oh, yeah. Well, a little. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Oh, no. <laughs> it's all fine. Oh, no. <laughs> and then here's the thing. real problem is now I have this dough and I'm just sitting here in front of it and I do want to just eat, eat all of it. Yeah, it's so, <laughs> and it's, there's no egg or anything in it, right? No, it's true. So, this is true. Yeah, I, uh, in the Netherlands where I'm from, they have, uh, um, they have a cookie dough company now because 
I remember seeing a show, a television show in like from the States, because that's what we see here, um, that they had like this roll of cookie dough that you could just eat. And I was like in the 90s and I was fascinated by, by this. And I was like, oh, we, I want this too, but I could never find it. And every time I went to the States, I was like, I have to find this, but I could <laughs> never, never find it. Uh, but now finally they have, uh, they have one in the Netherlands. So you can order it, like all this batter from them. And it's like, yes, I can eat it. <laughs> It's not, not healthy or anything, but it's delicious. No, definitely not, but it's <laughs> probably delicious. Yes. That sounds great. <laughs> um, yeah, Morticia still. I think I showed it uh, somewhere in, uh, at some point in the Netherlands, I think. Cool. Um, so thank you for, being, <laughs> for, doing, for doing that. Well, um, thank, you for, thank you for showing it. I'm glad that you liked it. Sorry? <laughs> so thank you for showing it. I appreciate that. Yeah, and sure. I'm glad of you course. liked the game. Yeah. Um, really, uh, yeah, what was the, uh, do you still, like, um, what was the reception for that game? It was um, definitely, like, very positive. We were really overwhelmed mm -hmm. with how much people liked it. If you go to Steam, not so much. People yeah. on Steam were very mm -hmm. much like, this isn't a real game. Right. <laughs> um, but, you know, they also, it's, uh, um, you know, I think there was a lot of critiques about it that were like totally valid. And like, I want to hear those things so that we can do better and like make a better game. Um, but no, for the most part, it was really, really positive. People were really, um, really surprised by it. They really liked it. We still get, it's, it's the game's almost five years old. I think it's gonna be five mm -hmm. years old this year. Mm -hmm. And we still get emails and DMs about people saying like, hey, this really, or from people saying, this game really helped me. This game, I learned a lot about this, or this, or this, or like when someone died, I was able to use the knowledge I learned from the game to help me out. Like it was, I don't know, it's just really cool to see that the game has such an impact on people. And we weren't, it's such a small game, we weren't expecting kind of any of that. So yeah, yeah it's been very, very lovely. Yeah. Did you like, did you market it uh, in in specific way or did you like put it in festivals? Uh, like how did you get those? Yeah. Things? Um, I don't know if we changed, I don't know if we did anything different marketing wise. I think we just, we, we put it in festivals. We brought it to a lot of smaller events spaces. Um, do you want to try some cookie dough? Sorry, my partner is here. <laughs> it's real. The dough is really good. It's yeah. I, I'm a big fan of the dough. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, brought it to different events. Uh, definitely like smaller events, but also uh, around that time, a few larger events like Day of the Devs was starting to get pretty big, like Double Fine's Day of the Devs, and they included us in one of their events. And that was really cool because our game was so small compared to everybody else that was there. But a lot of the people that came to that event were specifically like very interested in it. So it was kind of this like weird shift in like 2016 where you were seeing a lot more like small, like very wholesome, not games, getting the same space as bigger, like more traditional games. And so we were very lucky. I get, I think in that, just, that's just like how mm. the zeitgeist was at the time. Um, in terms of like marketing it differently, I think the only thing we did was just we knew that a lot of people who were interested in the game were people that maybe don't normally play games like they were more interested in the subject matter than the fact that it was a game and so making sure that we um interacted with and marketed to spaces that were not already games existing you know like it's very easy for us to go or and at the time at least um a big way that everybody marketed their games was like you go on twitter and there's game developers mm -hmm. and like journalists and you just like tweet a gif but a lot of our audience were people that like weren't on Twitter, they don't know anything about games. They're just more interested in like the death subject matter. And so making sure that we go to those spaces and like interact with like that audience mm -hmm. was very, very interesting. Um, yeah. Sorry, what'd you say? Oh, and the big thing too, sorry, my partner just chimed in. And uh, a big thing that worked out for us as well was when we were done the game, we waited three, like, we waited a bit before releasing it and we instead gave press 
three or four weeks to play the game ahead of time, which was really helpful because I think a lot of times press are only given like a week or two to play games. And um, we were like, okay, we're a really small game. I know Destiny 2 or Destiny was like came out right before yeah. Destiny 2 Destiny came right before Mario Odyssey. Wow. That's right. Yeah. And so we were like, we want to make sure that we give press enough time mm. to play it. Yeah. And that was one of the things we got a lot of feedback on from press where they were like, hey, we're really glad that you gave us a lot of time because right now we're playing through all these really big games. We don't have time to play smaller games. And so you giving us three or four weeks in advance to play it made sure that we had like people to play it. So that was really helpful. Yeah. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like other than that, we didn't really do anything too, too differently. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. And uh, what are you working on now? Can you share? So I work, yeah, I work at, um, I work at Trickbox Studios. Bye. <laughs> Have a good day. Um, so my partner, uh, my partner and I co-founded Laundry Bear, which is what we made Morticia's Tale under. And um, in 2019, I decided to kind of take a step back from Laundry Bear and I took a full-time job at uh, Trickbox Studios, who's also based here in Toronto. They're really well known for a game called Guacamele, which is like a Metroidvania. Um, and they made a game called Sever that was also really popular. And so I was offered a job with them as a senior artist. So I took that job and that, that's where I've been working for the last few years. And uh, we just released a game called Nobody Saves the World, which came out in January. Um, and it's Drinkbox is like most successful game so far, which is ridiculous because it's like, I don't know, I, whenever I work on a game, I'm always like, no, it, there's no way that people like this. I don't know if anyone else is like this, but mm. it's just like this weird imposter syndrome, I guess, of like, oh no, it's not that good. <laughs> uh, but it is really good. I, it's, I'm really proud of it. And um, yeah, we're working on some other related stuff right now and we're starting to, um, where since last year we started doing uh, pitches or like internal pitches of like, what's the next thing we wanna work on as a studio. And so mm -hmm. those discussions have been going on for a while and people are prototyping some things. So we're kind of doing a couple things in tandem. So I can't talk about any of that stuff yet, but that's mostly just because we're still kind of figuring it out yeah. as a studio. Um, but yeah, I really like working at Drinkbox because they, I was a big fan of them for years and years and years prior to working with them. Mm -hmm. and being able to work with them has been really cool because you get to see kind of like how the sausage gets made, so to speak. <laughs> like, it's really cool to see how they tackle certain problems that, you know, I would have tackled differently. Or mm -hmm. when my partner and I were making games, it was always just the two of us and then like a couple of collaborators. And it was very, very different than working with a team of like 15 full-time people. And so, I don't know, it's very interesting to see kind of how, how things are different. Um, yeah. yeah. And what's most exciting about your job? Most exciting? Um, I think it's just like the people I work with mm -hmm. are really, it's very cool to, again, because I admired them for so long and like mm -hmm. the games they make, it's really cool to work with them and see how they solve problems and like design things. And uh, Augusto Quijano, who is the art director at Trickbox um, and also like the concept artist, um he's just really he's really really cool and he has a really good um eye for this is gonna sound like he's a really good concept artist he's very very good about thinking out concepts and I think for me I'm that's the weakest part of like I'm I'm very bad about thinking about concepts for things I'm really good about like doing production or making a lot of a thing the middle of the project, the end of the project, but I'm, I have a really hard time at the beginning of a project, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it's really cool to see someone who is like very in their element and this is like what they're best at and like see how they do things. And so a lot of the concepts that Kusho made for Nobody Saves the World or even like the new things that we're starting to talk about, he's just like, he's just really, he just thinks about everything. So for me, if it's like, okay, we're making a, a game and it's medieval, my brain is like, okay, I'm going to think about the things that we already know, like castles and dragons, but he's like, what if it's medieval, but X, Y, and Z, or what if it's like this? And he like really, really thinks about what the world looks like and what the characters would look like and how they would act. Like he really fleshes out a whole world when he makes any kind of art. And I love that. I think that is such like a, a hard thing to do. Mm. 
and um, he's very, very good about doing it. And it's just really cool to like, as a person who's not as good as that at, at doing that, to kind of see that and like learn from him. So, and also it's really cool to like work for a studio that's so established and see how they um, make decisions from like design standpoints, from business standpoints. Yeah, I don't know. That's probably my favorite part of working yeah. with them. It's just like learning. It's just learning so much for this team that I deeply respect. So very long-winded answer, I'm sorry. No, that's but. <laughs> fine, that's cool. We do have, like, uh, we passed our hour or so a little bit. So, oh, no. Uh, yeah, <laughs> which is fine, which is fine. But uh, we need to finish up, right, Thorsten? I'm looking at Thorsten there, if he's, he's next. Uh, the cookies are not ready yet, though, but we can share them on, uh, on social media somewhere, right? Or, or how, are they how are they doing at the moment? Mine are... Mine are still being cooked right now, but yeah. they look good. Yeah, they look good. <laughs> they look good. Thorsten is opening our can... oven. I don't know if you can see my oven. They're not done yet, but no. they are cookies. Mm, yeah, they're cookies. They look definitely. like cookies. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> yeah, I need. Yeah, I need to know how your muffins <laughs> turned out. I need to know. I'm. I know. I'm I'm invested. <laughs> I might make like a little video of uh, Thorsten eating one. So I can see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what it looks like <laughs> yeah if nothing else at least you have the dough that you can exactly we uh, on, like right. do you see like do you see mine like okay now it's a little bit firmed up okay yeah but, but uh yeah i guess i can make cookies out of these <laughs> yeah i think they're very sturdy muffins or very like or very squishy <laughs> cookies like right in between <laughs> i hope they're delicious yeah they Anyway. If nothing else, then you get like you get this like soupy dough. And you can just yeah, just eat it, <laughs> just eat it like that. Yeah, um, yeah. So let's share our cookies uh, on on social media, right? That we can yeah. see the final results. Um, yes. And I could talk more and longer, but I hope to see you in real life at some point, either in yeah. Berlin or in Canada or somewhere. Um, yeah. If uh, what's your website so that people can go there? I'm Gabby Darienzo at uh, GabbyDarienzo.com, and I'm also just at Gabby Darienzo on every social media. Every so, social media. So, every social media. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can check out uh, Gabby Darienzo on social media, websites, everywhere. Also, uh, do you post your uh, baking on, on Twitter or? On, on yeah, Twitter? I'll post it. I'll, I'll post it. I want, I want to share what mine look like, but I also want to see if anyone else, I know Kara's yes, been for cooking. Sure. I want to see Kara's. I want to see anyone else who's, who's baking. What we do have like, a so. hashtag for as Amaze Life Cooking Show, I think. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> for also the previous years that we did the live cooking shows. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining us, Gabby. Thanks, thanks for having me. It it's, was very uh, lovely to hang out. And, and <laughs> thanks to Kara actually for um, uh, mentioning you because I was looking for people to, to bake on stream or cook on stream. So thank you also. Um, thank you, Kara. Yeah. Um, have a lovely time. Have a lovely Sunday as well. And uh, hopefully we meet soon. Yeah, that sounds okay. good. Thank you. Bye. Bye.